Welcome to Shotgun Story, the podcast that has conversations with indie creators about music, meaning, and the point of it all, so that you may be inspired by the journeys of other artists who are doing it for themselves, and maybe gain a little more understanding as to why it matters quite so much that you keep creating. Yvette Romalo is the marketing and PR officer for Sampra. She focuses particularly on the Sampra Development Fund, which is coming up and the deadline is soon. So I thought we'd have her in studio here to talk about that. But firstly, hi Yvette. Hi Victoria and everybody at your podcasts. How are you all doing? Good, good. It's so nice to have you on this very rainy Johannesburg day. I'm going to start off with some real basics because I know a lot of musicians that we work with don't know about Sampra or why they should join. So let's start there. What is Sampra and what is the role of it? Sampra stands for the South African Music Performance Rights Association. Mm -hmm. And Sampra is a collective management organization which mainly focuses on the collection of royalties and the royalties that we would collect would be needle time rights royalties. What is a needle time right? So needle time rights, the simplest way to explain it, it's the right of recording artists Mm -hmm. and record companies whenever their music gets played on Sampra licensed music uses Mm -hmm. so it's the right when a recording artist i'd make an example like myself who is a singer yeah and i go into studio and i record music yeah and then that music is commercialized and played on your radio broadcasters or it's played in a coffee shop an establishment that Mm -hmm. plays your music as a recording artist Okay. So you find sometimes recording artists are signed with record companies, or even if you're not signed with record companies, you find that record companies are members of Sampra, yeah. and they have music that is released under their record company that is recorded within their recording studios. That's how the commercialization of it, and that's how we would collect the royalties for recording artists and record companies. Okay, so it's different from Samra because Samra is mostly for songwriters and yes. you guys collect the rights of the actual artists themselves. Yes. And from my understanding, from anyone who plays on a track. So Sampra would represent your recording artist, yeah. your backing vocalist, mm-hmm. your instrumentalist, your guitarist, Wonderful. your pianist, which we refer them as session musicians. Okay. And then Samra would just represent your songwriters, your composers, and your publishers, publishing companies. Amazing. In terms of Samra, we've got three role codes that we look into when we pay royalties to artists. Yeah. We have what we call a featured performer, yeah. which is the main artist of the song. Mm-hmm. We've got other featured performer which is the featured guest on the song. Yeah. And then we've got a non-featured, which is your backing vocalist, your instrumentalist, and your guitarist. Okay. And there's a set split for that in terms of when we distribute the royalties to our clients, how we go about it. It's a standard split sheet Mm -hmm. for when we distribute that. So a featured performer and the other featured performer Mm -hmm. would share the 65% of the royalties. Okay. And then a non-featured performer, which I had mentioned, Mm -hmm. would receive 35% of the royalties. And then the record company would get 50% of the royalties. In this way, there's basically a 50-50% split. 50% split to the recording artist, 50% split to the record company and then from that 50% from the record from the recording artist there's a 65% and 35% split that's why 
we always encourage artists that even if you were just featured on the song, you were featured guest on the song, mm -hmm. you need to, you know, register that song. And also the featured performer who's the main artist of the song also needs to register the song with us and also credit the artists that he worked with and the system musicians that were part of the making of that recording or that album. Okay, wonderful. If you release it independently, that 50% cut that normally goes to a record label will go back towards that other split or the featured artist, do you know? Are you saying if you released it independently with our record company? Yes, yeah. Yes, so that would be the case. Okay, amazing. But mostly in terms of, you know, independents sometimes do have somebody's recording studio that they're using. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, it's not mainly their recording studio. You find that maybe you are an independent, but you are aware of recording studios that you record music there. If you know that you're a recording studio and you're a record label, we would encourage that you also make sure that you register because as a recording studio and as a record company, an artist is coming to your services to use your work in order to distribute their music. Amazing. So really you guys take care of everyone, including everyone behind the scenes. Yes. So it's fairly important that a musician becomes a member. It's fairly important that they become a member of Sampra. And the nice thing about being a member of Sampra is that there is no membership free. You know, it's totally free to become mm -hmm. a member of Sampra. Um, applying for membership as well is quite seamless. You know, it doesn't give you a headache in terms of, oh, we are requiring so many information. It's just straightforward. We just require personal details, your artistic name, which is, you know, your stage name. If you're part of a band, you know, we would require that as well. Physical address, where you are situated, and then your banking details. Because with Sampra, we pay the royalties directly into your account. So even if you are signed under a record label, mm. the share of the record label would go to the record label and mm -hmm. your share as a recording artist, whether you were a featured performer, a other featured performer or a non-featured performer, you'd still get your 65% royalties or 35% of the royalties. And we pay that directly into your banking details. It's quite important that when you apply for membership with us, you have the correct information so that we've got the correct banking details when we pay the royalties directly into your account. Okay, that's wonderful. So now I want to move on to the Sampra Development Fund. Why does it exist and what is it for? The Sampra Development Fund was launched in August 2020. It's basically a corporate social investment arm of Sampra. And with the Sampra Development Fund, we just want to contribute to the music industry and also contribute to the livelihood of our members and members of the music industry and also ensure that we elevate them as musicians, you know, and not just focus on just be a collecting society that just, you know, collect and distribute the money to them. But mm -hmm. how can we elevate the life of a recording artist or a record company that's still independent, that still needs resources in order for them to shine and take up space within the industry. So mm. it was it was created for that, to ensure that there is sustainable development within an artist, to ensure that there is career growth within an artist, to ensure that um, an artist is equipped. Just being a creative, you also need to be equipped and know about you know, the music business because the music business is it's, it's a forever changing industry. Every day there's something new and you need to make sure that you equip yourself and that you are well informed about everything. So firstly, how many times a year does the fund open up for applications? It opens two times in the year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes okay. we do make it three times. So in the past when we started and launched it in 2020, it just opened for one year because we were still launching it. In mm -hmm. 2021, we had three window periods. In 2022, we opened for two periods and we are now currently open for the year 2023 and we'll be closing on the 28th of February. Mm -hmm. And then we will have a second leg earlier in the year for events that are happening, 
September to December. Okay, wonderful. Now, what are the focus areas and categories that you guys fund? The Samba Development Fund has eight key focus areas. Mm -hmm. So the first one is education, training and development, which is only eligible to Sampa members. So when I say Sampa members, I'm referring to your recording artists and record companies that have earned at least 3,000 Rand royalties from Sampa. Okay. So you'll see that some of the products that I mentioned will need you to have earned, you know, royalties from Sampa. Okay, so some of the products. Yes. But there are some that don't. Okay. Yes. So there are three products which need you to have earned royalties from us in mm -hmm. order to be eligible for funding. Uh, other products that don't need you to have earned any royalties for you to be okay. able to apply for funding. Mm -hmm. So the first three is education, training and development, Yeah. which we have partnered with Academy of Sound Engineering, whereby as a recording artist or a record company exec, you can be able to study the business of music. And we offering two courses under the Academy of Sound Engineering, which is the highest certificate for audio technology mm -hmm. and a diploma in audio technology as well. Oh, wow. It's a 100% full bursary. You don't need to pay a cent. You just need to make sure that you apply and go out there and ace it and just be great as an artist, you know, and you equip yourself. With this course, you, you learn a lot about, you know, audio technology, needle time rides, and all the other royalty streams that are available for you as an artist. You also learn about music publishing, licensing deals, contract negotiations, because it's quite important that as an artist, you are aware of everything that you get yourself into, you know? Yeah, Not just 100%. being a creative and getting into studio, but also understanding every piece, every puzzle of being a musician. Wow, that sounds amazing. Number two, music production. Mm -hmm. We can be able to fund, if you would like to do an EP, an album, or a single. Mm -hmm. We are able to assist with the studio rental, the mixing and mastering, you know, session fees of, you know, being in studio with other session musicians, paying those session musicians, accommodation yeah. during your session fees with artists, and also graphic design of, you know, your upcoming single or album or EP. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we've got the travel and touring. Obviously, if you are booked to perform at a gig, whether locally or internationally, mm -hmm. to be able to travel to get to your gig and pay your road manager, the people that you are set to perform with on stage in order to make sure that you have a great gig as a team when you are traveling, promoting your album or promoting your upcoming album that you are planning to release or you are invited to perform at Afro Nation or this other international showcases that happen. Okay. So those are the three that require you to have earned at least 3,000 Rand royalties for you to be eligible to apply. All right. And then the other three do not need you to, you know, have earned anything. You must contribute something within the music industry. You must be a music promoter or a recording artist or a company that's like within the music business, whether in events, whether you're a cultural organization, whether you're a music school mm. that I'll mention now focuses mainly on those kind of industry bodies. So let's focus on the actual recording artists themselves, these next products. Okay. So for example, as a recording artist, we've got the live events product. Okay. If you're a recording artist, you can be a member of Sampra, you cannot be a member of Sampra, but you're still eligible to, you know, apply for this product. Okay. You can also be a promoter mm -hmm. as well who wants to apply for the live events product and be able to stage a live event. You know, staging a live event, we as the Sampra Development Fund, we will offer funding 
for venue hire, for sound equipment rental, for sound engineer fees, for marketing and promoting of the album, for project management, because we know those are the key focus areas when it comes to hosting a live event. And Mm -hmm. with live, we only accept live events, not pre-recorded events. Okay. And then we've got cultural organizations product, Mm -hmm. which mainly focuses on cultural organizations and music schools. But currently, we only have the cultural organizations only eligible to apply. Mm -hmm. And then with music schools, we'll only have an opportunity for them to apply in the second leg. I'll explain both of them. So with cultural organizations, you must be a cultural organization. You must be promoting and preserving cultural heritage in some kind of way. If you want to do a music festival that is, you know, focused on culture, heritage, social cohesion, Mm -hmm. and, and all of that. So that product will focus mainly on that. And then with music schools, if you are a music school and you teach kids, whether it's new instruments, I know that we partnered with a music school that focused on marimba. Mm -hmm. They were educating kids on, you know, how to play the marimba. So we had that. It's basically if, if you want to teach them, learn how to sing, you know, how to be able to hold a note can be able to apply under that product. Okay. And then the last product, awards and musicals. If you are doing awards and you need finding assistance for that, we encourage companies to apply. Mm -hmm. Awards that I've mentioned, you know, the Summers, the Gospel Crown Awards. There's quite a lot of awards that take place within the music industry, you know, the South African Ama Piano Awards, So if you know that, you know, you are an organization that's all about honoring musicians within the industry, we encourage you to also apply for that product. Hmm. If you want, you know, to stage musical in theater, you know, we also encourage for organizations and recording artists to apply for that product. In a nutshell, that is the Sampa Development Fund. And the other two would focus again on, you know, our earning members because we still want to make sure that we show them that we care about them, you know, as a collective management organization. So we've got the funeral benefit scheme whereby should you as an artist or your spouse or your children below the age of 18, you know, unfortunately pass away, we would be able Mm -hmm. to assist with the funeral arrangements. And then we've got the post-retirement savings. Should you reach that retirement age of 65, we will ensure that we pay you premiums per month so that, you know what, while you're on retirement, you enjoy your retirement. With Sampra, still making sure that you are receiving money from us. Wow, that is an unbelievable product. Yes. You hear of a lot of stories of older musicians, legends, really, who are not taken care of uh, in their old age. So would musicians who are over 65 then be eligible to apply for that or recording artists? It would basically be musicians who are Sampra members who have Mm -hmm. earned the 3,000 rand um, threshold that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know that you're an artist and you are a member of Sampra and you have earned royalties, then should anything happen to you or your children that are still below the age of 18, we will be able to assist with, you know, funeral arrangements. Should you reach your retirement age, you know that we will be able to assist to ensure that since you will not be gigging anymore and being able to perform anymore, that you know that you've got an income that you're still getting from Mm. some class. So it's wonderful. And we encourage our members that they always update their personal information with us and also they update their beneficiaries with us as well so that we know Mm. that should anything happen to them, we know who we get in contact with and we know who to be able to pass on the baton of what their mother or father or sister or brother left for them here at Sampra. 
uh, that's an incredible thing. So let's get back to the development fund for a moment here. How much of a project's costs would the fund cover? With each product, the cap amounts differ. Mm-hmm. We won't fund more than 50% of the total budget. Okay. Or for each product. So people have to have some skin in the game. Yes, they definitely, you know, have to have some sort of other cash injection that they have. Mm-hmm. And also do encourage that if you do have any other sponsors mm-hmm. that would like to partner with you as well, that we are aware of them so that we know that the collaboration is with this number of sponsors on board and so forth. Okay. With the training and development, obviously it's a full bursary. Unfortunately, you don't need to take out anything there. You just need to make sure that, you know, you attend the classes, you learn something new from that, you learn the equipments that you are required to for audio technology side of things. Absolutely. Now, how do people apply? On the website at www.sampafund.co.za. That's Mm -hmm. if you want to apply for funding. When you get into the funding website, you will basically click on the product that you'd like to apply for. Mm -hmm. You would be required to create an account. You create a profile. Once you create a profile and you've logged in, you will be on the dashboard, which is, you know, we now have a portal whereby there's a dashboard of all the products that are open. You just click on the product there again, and then the application form will pop up. So we are only accepting applications that are submitted online. Mm -hmm. We still have people sending through proposals via email. And we just encourage everybody to, you know, just use the right processes to apply for Mm. funding, which is online. After they can be able to track their application to see, you know, in terms of status where the application is right now. And then within two to three months, they'll be able to receive feedback. Now, what are some of the mistakes that people make when they're applying that disqualify them or that makes an application success unlikely? So the most common mistake is outstanding documents. Okay. And not having the right quotations because I feel like applicants are so much in a hurry of, I just want to submit this and get it over and done with. Yeah. You need to take time with your application. You need to look at your total budget and say, if my total budget is 100K, my quotations as well should match my budget. So you find that clients say their budget is 100K, but their quotations are like 250K. Then we're like, okay, which one is it? So if your total budget says this X amount, then your quotations as well should say this X amount. Then we know that this is the funding amount that you are applying for and that you need assistance for. So that's the common mistake that applicants do. Another one would be your project concept is not quite clear Mm -hmm. in terms of what it is that you want to do. When we review your application, it needs to be clear that, you know what, you want to have an event at Emerentia Dam with these are the proposed artists that you'd like to be part of your event. Then we also understand, okay, we also understand the project concept. But if you're saying, oh, I want to have an event and then we're also going to record the event that would disqualify you because you have not read the funding rules. That's just a common mistake that we see under the live events product. Music production, common mistake is that one of our funding rules there is that the projects that you are applying for, the recording of the project should have not started. Okay. An applicant is applying for music production, but you find that one of the singles from the upcoming album is already released that practically disqualifies you because that's a breach of the funding rules. Yeah. I would encourage everybody that listens to your podcast to ensure that they read the funding rules and eligibility criteria before applying so that when they submit their application, they know that they have not breached any funding rule 
and that mm -hmm. they know that their application will go for further review. Because once we pick that up, it's unfortunate that your application can't go through for further review. Okay. Read the funding rules. If you still don't understand the funding rules, you are able to call us, you are able to email us so that we can be able to explain to you the most important rules that ensure that you should not breach before you apply for the funding. So that's wonderful. And I suppose what's particularly nice about it is because there's a lot of documents to gather and make sure are correct. Yes. Is at least if people aren't quite ready for this round, at least there's another round slightly later in the year. So if you don't have your stuff together yet, you can hold off, but don't start recording your next album until you've applied. Yes. Take your time with it. You know, the nice thing about the Sampa Development Fund portal is that you are able to save and continue later with your application. Yeah, that's important. We're not saying that when you apply for funding, you have to like submit everything all at once. If you know that you have an outstanding quotation that you're still waiting for, then save and continue later. Mm. Another mistake that applicants do is applying last minute. Oh, so yes. that's why I say that, you know what, when you know that we are open for funding, it's yeah. nice for you to go look at what's required. You can start with, you know, your details. That's fine. Then about us, then an executive summary about who you are, then the project concept. Then if you feel like, okay, this is a bit too much for me. Let me save and continue the following day. You focus on another section and all of that. Then you know mm. you are very adamant that you know what this proposal is of quality, and I really want this funding. Okay, so is there anything else you'd like to add about the fund? There's a service provider that we are currently working with to launch a mental health campaign mm. and how we want to see our members being assisted whenever they feel unsure or unhappy or have financial stress mm. we want to see them get support from mm. the right professionals so that is something that we are working on to offer that to our sampa members to know that we care about them and we want them when they get on stage to perform, when they go into the recording studio to record new music, or when they are traveling, they don't have to have anxiety over things that might be bothering them, that they know that they always have some pride, they have a professional that is always on call 24-7 to have an ear. Mm. Has that kicked off? It's going to kick off quite soon. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a campaign around that because we have seen a lot of mental health issues that have come up. And it's good to see that a lot of artists are now coming out and not shy to speak about it. 100%. Are able to say, I need help. Then we could say, you know what, we are here for you. And this is what we want for you. And they would not need to pay a cent for that. Also, the professional service provider will not share third-party confidential information about, you know, whatever has been spoken about in there. But all we want is to see our members who create music, mm -hmm. seeing them just being happy as much as we are happy when we hear the music. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, speaking of music, what artist were you listening to on your way to work this morning? This morning, I started my day listening to Mandisi, who's a jazz artist, and he's phenomenal. Wonderful. When it was raining so beautifully, I was like, oh, no, no. This is how we start our morning. A little bit of jazz music. Oh, that sounds so wonderful. How can people get in touch with you? Email us at info at sampra dot org mm -hmm. dot okay and you know for any inquiries about you know the sampa development fund they can email us at info at sampa fund dot co dot zere. if they'd like to call us they can call us at zero one one five six one nine six six zero should they want to dm us or follow us on our social media platforms Twitter, we are at official Sampra. Mm -hmm. Instagram, we are 
at Sampra underscore RSA. And Facebook, we are South African Music Performance Fights Association. Amazing. So people can keep their ears open and their eyes open and see what's coming, especially for this mental health project that you have launching soon as well. Yes. Amazing. Thank you so much for chatting. This is incredible information that I think that there are a number of people who are going to really benefit. So thank you, Yvette. Thank you so much for having me and your team. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy it with a little bit of jazz music and some coffee. I might actually. It's not a bad idea. If you are an independent artist whose passion for what you do can inspire or fuel others, get in touch. I'd love to chat. You can find me on ShotgunTory.com. You've been listening to another production from Solid Gold Podcasts. A lung full of dusty ore. Some of the parts that led to the drought eventually strip my stars. But every day is one day closer to the Degrees of severity, a measure but never seen A leisure of luxury to fall apart, now I'm 16 Setting the psyche of hell, on meds get to make me well Writing degrees of hopelessness and writing out this hot spell But every day, is one day closer to the rain But every day, is one day closer to the rain Check.